Okay, so I don't know which channel this is going on. Probably my main channel. So I guess uh, hey gamers and non gamers alike, this is Chromian and commentating. Uh, with the upcoming 3ds and Wii U eShop closures pending, uh, I wanted to do a video just kind of talking about my personal experiences with the Wii Shop channel and the 3ds and Wii U eShops because I have a few stories I want to tell and also touch upon some games I really like. So. Here we go. This is going to be relatively off the cuff. I do have like a written script or, you know, at the same time, I, this isn't like rehearsed or anything, so there is going to be some stumbles, hopefully not too many, because I should be able to remember a lot of stuff at the top of my head, but with that being said, let's uh, get on with it. <laughs> As for my early experiences with the Wii Shop channel, it goes all the way back to when I first got my Wii, which was in 2007. It was in May, and during my first few months of the console, I was exploring the console's features and capabilities. Um, not just by doing it on the console itself, but also reading about it online. I was heavily invested in like gaming websites and stuff like that, and just reading about what the next games and next systems could do. And uh, I discovered that the Wii had a feature called the Wii Shop Channel, where you could go online and buy stuff digitally and download onto your system. Stuff includes virtual console games, old Nintendo games from the NES, SNES, and N64 era, and other examples include WiiWare, which is kind of like an own digital platform for exclusive games on the Wii Shop Channel, and also other channels like the Everybody Votes Channel, uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently I can't think of any other examples. Wow. So, for the lo for the longest time when I was really young, I wanted to get Super Mario 64 because I wanted to do the 16 star run, which I had seen people do on the internet. And so, for for ages I'd been asking my dad if I can get an N64 off eBay, because that's the only place I knew I could get an N64, my dad kept saying no. But after we got our Wii and I discovered the virtual console service, I was like, hey dad, you know, we had this new thing. You don't want me to get an N64 off eBay because it's old and whatnot, but the Wii is new, so we can get a Mario 64, right? And he still said no. I guess because he just didn't tr he just didn't uh, feel comfortable with the, like a new online digital service, especially when I, at a young age like myself. He, I guess maybe it just didn't feel the same way to him as just going to a brick and mortar store. So I pestered him about it for about a year, and then after a while, <laughs> he got really upset with me just for constantly talking about games, and then. Uh, just wondering if he was just worried about my education, I guess, being thinking like I was so distracted by games I just won't focus on school. So I was afraid to talk to him about games for a long time after that. About another another year or so, or maybe a few months. And the same with Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. So my main exposure to the Wii's online services was just watching other people do it on YouTube and stuff like that. And just I would also I would always constantly watch videos and just think, oh man, I wish I could do that. He did get me Mario 64 DS initially to try and shut me up, I guess, or trying to make me happy, I guess. that's the way I should put it. <laughs> Try and, you know, help fill that hole, but I, you can't do the backwards long jump in Mario's, in Mario 64 DS, so I was still not satisfied. <laughs> My only other experience through virtual console games would be through the Brawl's Master, Super Smash Bros. Brawl's Masterpiece section, where you can play a handful of virtual console games for a limited period of time, so I think Ocarina of Time's demo was like 5 minutes or something. So you'd play for a bit, and then after a while it would you get a splash screen saying, hey this demo is over, now we'll take you back to Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So that was my only other exposure to that. I did get a classic controller, because I was hoping that I'd be able to access virtual console stuff a lot sooner, but I didn't actually get around to it until a lot later, which I'll touch upon, which I'll touch on soon enough. Uh, I remember waiting at Best Buy actually with my dad uh, sometime after Chinese school because I actually I went I went to Chinese school on weekends and I was at I was at Best Buy we waited and then after a while we got in and I got my classic controller and I didn't I only used it for like retail Wii games because like the way I saw it I had plenty of like Wii and GameCube games that used the Wii Remote and Nunchuck and GameCube controller respectively and I didn't really have too many that used the classic controller itself. So, whenever I had an opportunity to use the classic controller, I always used it. Nowadays though, like, since I have a lot of more exposure to virtual console stuff, it's not really, it's like not that big of a deal to me. Actually, for some games that I used to use uh, the classic controller in, I've actually switched back to Wii Remote and Nunchuck, or just Wii Remote in some cases. So, <laughs> I think it's funny, because like, at this point I have plenty of options to use my classic controller. Another interesting experience I recall with the Wii Shop channel was 
my a friend of mine back when I used to go to a daycare wanted to get Pokemon Rumble, and I told him that hey, you can you know connect to your Wii to the internet and then download the game off the Wii Shop channel. So I think maybe it was like a day later, or maybe a few days afterwards, uh, he came up to me and he was like, "I got Pokemon Rumble thanks to you, and because you told me about all this." the steps you take to actually get it. And I'm like, oh, cool. So he got Pokemon Rumble. It's funny because it was actually he's actually younger than me. So <laughs> he got access to it. I mean, he, he had an older brother. I had an older sister as well, but for some reason, we just never got around to configuring all that stuff on the Wii. We did on PS3, but we didn't really do it on Wii. But uh, I didn't actually get ac access to like downloading stuff on the Wii Shop channel until 2013. So shortly after the Wii U came out, uh, we decided, hey, you know, I'm getting older, I still want to get stuff. <laughs> I don't know, it's, I'm probably not doing a good job explaining it, but we decided, because like my sister kind of had her own credit card at that point, so we decided to get some stuff. The first game we got was Pokemon Snap, because like my sister actually has a little pamphlet, not pamphlet, but it was kind of like a excerpt from like a, maybe a magazine or something, like a maybe Game Pro. It's kind of like a mini guide on Pokemon Snap. I don't know if I can find an image of it, but... Uh, it basically just showed you, like, hey, where you can catch all the different Pokemon, how you can access different locations, all that stuff. And so we actually used it, because, like, my sister was interested in playing the game as a kid, but we never had an N64. So it was kind of like, after all these years, we can finally put that guide to good use. <laughs> Even though we don't really need it anymore, but hey, it's, it's still cool for the sake of the novelty. And uh, shortly after that, I started b slowly buying a few more games off the Wii Shop channel. I did get, I did finally get Mario 64, and uh, I it took me like two years, 100% it or something. And at the time, like, I was kind of like my opinions were kind of uh, how should I put it, kind of inspired by other people. So I kind of had the impression of, oh yeah, it's enjoyable, but yeah, I don't think it's aged too well. But uh, recently, actually, I I think I've warmed up to Mario 64 a lot more. Uh, I 100%ed it like over five times at this point, I think, over the past four years or something, so, yeah. <laughs> There's that, and I, I have done the 16 star run multiple times, so, there you go. In terms of Virtual Console's other selections, I did keep my eye on, like, some of the newer releases and stuff, and, like, I did take note of how not every single game was released on the system, or on the service, I should say, and, like, sometimes game... there'd be months where there wouldn't be any new releases at all, like, I think at, at the beginning, like, they were really pushing the service, so, like, they were releasing games, like, almost every week or every few months or something. But after a while, it, it went from, like, a few months to, like, several months where we wouldn't see any new releases for a while, and... Uh, a friend of mine did actually get access to the Wii Shop channel, and they did buy a few things. Like, they bought points cards in the stores. I never had that opportunity with the Wii or DSi, but... Uh, I sometimes go to his house and play some games. Uh, one of the standout examples for me were Jet Rocket and Art of Balance, which I believe are made by the same company, Shinan, if I'm saying that right. And so we would play like the demos and stuff, and Jet Rocket was like kind of like a platformer. I'd seen footage of it before on YouTube, and it looked interesting to me, so I, we tried it, and it was like, I thought it was a neat little 3D platformer on the Wii, and Art of Balance also really stuck with me because it's a game where you have to like balance blocks, and the style is like very zen-like, there was like water textures that, that I really liked. Uh, the whole aesthetic felt very like, almost like you had like a personal bathhouse or something. And that really stuck with me and it's been re-released on many platforms. I eventually got it for Wii U and still, I don't know if I, have I 100 percent of that game yet? I, maybe? I don't remember. We also, I also played Lit at my friend's house where you kind of navigate through like dark classrooms and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if I played World of Goo at his house. I do remember seeing the game, though. Uh, some other notable Weaver titles for me would be uh, Mega Man 9 and 10. I remember seeing footage of that. Though I think it was like probably my first exposure to Mega Man in general. I was just watching 9 and 10 on YouTube, and so I remember like again it was another one of the things we're seeing that it's like oh I want to try that, and I didn't try it until a lot later. I think I tried the PS3 demo at some point. Uh, I did see some other games like. I didn't really watch Strong Bad videos, but I do recall seeing like thumbnails for it and stuff like that. Uh, there was Tetris Party, which I believe also got a physical release, like Dr. Mario Online, I think. Uh, Sonic 4 also got released on WiiWare. I played it on other platforms, and I did get it through other means, because I didn't actually get around to actually buying it like properly, if that makes any sense.
I remember hearing the announcement that Sonic 4 Episode 2 wouldn't get released on WiiWare because of WiiWare's... Uh, was it like 40 megabyte limitation for games? So it just never got released on Wii. As for the rest of my virtual console games, I mainly got them through services like Club Nintendo because I joined Club Nintendo pretty late. It was like 2014 when I joined. And I got a lot of my virtual console games there mainly due to lack of physical rewards at that time. That This is like a year before the service shut down. So I was getting stuff like Mario Golf, Star Fox 64, uh, Super Smash Brothers I believe I got off Club Nintendo. And uh, my, my friend, another friend of mine, he also got stuff off Club Nintendo. He got Pilot Wings and stuff. Okay, in terms of uh, 3DS eShop, my sister and I got both of our 3DSs at the system's launch. I remember that the Nintendo eShop wasn't even available for the first three months of the system being out, unlike the Wii Shop channel which had been out since the console itself launched. I remember when I was first looking through the eShop on the 3DS, I would see like a lot of like some exclusive uh, games on 3DS. Uh, there was also like a lot of DSiWare stuff because you could still because 3DS was still backwards compatible, a lot of DS stuff. So I saw a, a wide range of content, either backwards compatible stuff or newer stuff. I remember later in that year, in 2011, there was also releasing like 3D versions of NES games. There was the 3D Classic series, Kirby's Adventure, Excite Bike. I don't remember if they were free or if they were a discounted price, but I didn't get them right away. I still don't have them. Because I got my 3DS at launch, I became part of the Ambassadors program, which granted me access to free NES games and Game Boy Advance games. I remember... <laughs> Because I still, because my dad was still pretty adamant about the whole digital storefront thing. Like I remember when the eShop first came out on 3DS, I was like, "Hey, Dad, can I download stuff?" And he was like, "No. What do you want to download?" I'm like, "Okay." But uh, once I got the free stuff, I was like, "Hey, Dad, can I download this? It's free." And it's like, I think I got to a point where I was just like, "How many free games do you want to get?" And it's like, eventually, as I got older, I just kind of downloaded all of them because. Uh, you know, my parents weren't really monitoring that sort of thing as much. Well, it's more like, you know, I, we, I, they kind of started gradually letting me buy stuff. So I wasn't like irresponsible in terms of my purchases. I didn't get too carried away, but I did start kind of accessing the storefront. This was kind of like the transitional period where I finally could actually buy stuff and go online on my systems. So some standout titles for me include, uh, I finally got to play Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which I was interested in playing. I never actually beat it because I was trying to get 100% and I got stuck on a level, but I, I do like the mechanics of like Mario uh, doing handstands and stuff like that. Uh, it was also my first exposure to WarioWare. I played Mar WarioWare uh, Mega Micro Games, which I really enjoyed. And uh, I did 100% it, which <laughs> was, quite the, was quite the effort, if I, I have to say, because uh, it did take me a while, but I did really like it. I didn't really play NES games as much, because... Uh, I don't know, I just didn't, couldn't really, I just couldn't really get into them as much. Uh, there were a few GBA games I couldn't even get into. I wasn't really big on Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, for instance. Just never really got into it. What well, other milestones were there? Uh, oh yeah, there were uh, retail 3DS games being released digitally. I remember like, because with like WiiWare, for instance, even, I know they've been, they've done this with like 360 and PS3 before, but for Nintendo, WiiWare was mainly just smaller versions of console games that they would release if they didn't feel like doing a physical release, I guess. But now, on 3DS, they were finally releasing games you could buy in the store on the eShop, and that was, like, mind-blowing to me. I remember New Super Mario Bros. 2, when that was coming out, they made a huge announcement on the eShop saying, Oh yeah, New Super Mario Bros. 2, you can buy it on your, three, on your 3DS and just put it on your SD card. And I was like... <laughs> like, my mind was blown. Like, that was crazy to me. And I did take advantage of that feature a little bit, which I'll get into at some point. Uh, I remember when I turned 13, I, I started buying some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Uh, I remember buying Super Mario Land for my birthday and playing that because I was interested in it and I enjoyed it. Uh, let's see what else was there. I remember getting Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages because my sister has seasons physically and I've been playing that for a little bit, but I wanted to get Ages since I didn't have it. And I, I believe both games have like a link code like system like you can either connect link cables or use like a code to access exclusive content in both games if you had them so i figured i'll just buy ages and i can still play seasons on my sister's cartridge and then do that when the time arises uh <laughs> i still haven't gotten around to it yet but yeah it's, it's there for me definitely and uh i that kind of i not too much for me to say in terms of uh 3ds stuff which 
I'll get into later because I'm just kind of going through the order and stuff. And that kind of brings me to my discussion, my thoughts on the Wii U eShop. Uh, for the Wii U, I got the Wii U a few weeks after it launched on December 1st, I believe, of 2012. Uh, my dad just on a whim, he, he bought it <laughs> on a Saturday. Because I mean, a few weeks, I remember him asking, like, hey, I heard about the Wii U. Is How is it different from the Wii and everything? We explained to him the new features it had and all that stuff. And then he eventually decided to buy one for us, unexpectedly. But, uh, yeah, I remember, like, setting up my Nintendo Network ID. And because I was still 12 at the time, I did fake my age by one year just so I could access all the online features and stuff. Because I'm pretty sure you have to be 13 to access that stuff. I don't think I can change my age back anymore. <laughs> So, it, I'm forever born in 1999 on my other account, which I'm not going to say what it is. But uh, I remember, like, looking through... Oh yeah, another thing I, I forgot to mention is that I, I've always liked the music. I mean, I know, I know a lot of people... I do see a lot of people praise the music of the Wii Shop channel, but also, like, the 3DS and Wii Wii Shops, I particularly really like a, a lot more than the Wii, Wii Shop channel's music. Uh, especially considering that they would change it periodically. Uh, I, I still remember the the first Wii U eShop channel, like, vividly. Uh, you can find, like, people re-uploaded it online and stuff, and I still listen to that stuff every now and then. And, uh, I remember seeing, like, because they were already releasing retail games on 3DS at that point, they were also doing that on Wii U from the get-go. And so, like, I'd see, like, all these, like, icons of games on, like, Miiverse and stuff like that, and also on the Wii Shop, and on, on the Wii U eShop itself, and just seeing, you know, all the different games they had. Like, they had Nintendo Land, they had Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform, they had New Super Mario Bros. U, they had Zombie U, they had, uh, and gradually they started releasing other, like, digital exclusive games, uh, like, uh, Wooden Sensei, uh, Little Inferno, The Cave, stuff like that. Uh, similar to uh, my 3DS, I think it was actually like the same time period. Uh, some of my, my purchase, some of my first purchases were in the following year, in 2013. Uh, I, I, I believe you could. The currency is still linked to both accounts back then, so if I bought a gift card, I can use it on my account on both 3DS and Wii U. So I bought I bought Super Mario Land, as I mentioned. I also bought F Zero because at the time they were doing this promotion where they were re-releasing like some old, like you know, Virtual Console games like SNES stuff and NES stuff, and like they were charging I think only like 67 cents I believe it was at the time. So I got F Zero for like a huge, heavily discounted price, and I also got Super Metroid for that price, and so. I thought that was a really good deal, because normally they're 8 bucks. One thing that really stood to me about the virtual console services on the 3DS and Wii U was the introduction of restore points, which are basically save states. You can basically access like a special virtual console menu and then add a restore point and then you know come back to it later or whatever. Especially if it was a game you, that didn't support a save feature. If you wanted to, you can do that. In the case of the Wii U, one thing that really stood out to me was remappable buttons. Because on the Wii Virtual Console, you couldn't do that. So if you tried playing SNES games, for instance, with a GameCube controller, like if I tried playing Super Mario World with a GameCube controller, like I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it just wasn't ideal to me. So having the ability to remap buttons like that, I thought was really nice. So. And you can also use like your old controllers and stuff. You can use the gamepad, the pro controller, but you can also use your Wii Remote, your uh, classic controller, classic controller pro, all that stuff. So, I thought that was nice. One significant moment for me was when I bought Earthbound off the Wii U Virtual Console. Uh, I had been interested in the Mother series for quite a while. I've been following it since I was like eight. I remember watching footage of like Mother One and Two. I didn't really watch Mother Three back then because uh, I was just still kind of like following Mother One and Two stuff. I didn't really get into Mother Three until a bit later. But uh, yeah. After hearing that I could, you know, buy Earthbound and play it on TV and stuff and, like, not use, like, an emulator and stuff, I thought it was really nice, so I finally got around to- I bought it. It was one of the more expensive SNES games I remember. I think it was 10 or 11 bucks, I think. I know I'm- I know a new 3DS, I believe it's 13 bucks, but <laughs> on, on Wii U it was slightly cheaper, but I still got it, cause just so I could have it. it took me, like, seven years to beat it, but... <laughs> Because I, I played on and off and stuff, and sometimes I'd stop because I got stuck on a section or something. But that was definitely a standout moment for me because I, you know, I was also watching people like Steven vlog, and they they thought that like I know Steven thought they would never release Earthbound because they thought they had to change a lot of stuff because it is like does contain a lot of copyrighted stuff. So, but it did happen. 
Another inv innovation, I would say, was uh, DLC and game updates. The Wii sort of had updates and stuff. Like, I know with Skyward Sword, they had a special channel where you can update your save data, and because it had a save data glitch, so that was how they addressed it. But with the 3DS and Wii U, they would, games would get periodic updates and stuff, and you can also buy additional content that you wouldn't... That, that didn't come with like the base game and stuff like that. I know Smash Wii U and 3DS, there was like, you know, upcoming new characters, new costumes, new stages, all that stuff. So it opened up an avenue, I think, certainly for Nintendo to add additional online content that way. And also like, you know, Breath of the Wild DLC, I got the Champions Ballad DLC as well. I remember when they started adding DS games. Uh, I always thought that the, you know, the Wii U would be suited for DS games because there was the top screen, which was the TV, and then there was the bottom screen, which was the gamepad because it had touch capability and they didn't do it i remember them i remember them doing it in 2014 first when brain age came out for free only in japan and europe we didn't get it here in north america and i was kind of sad about that because i was like i want to try that i want to try ds on wii u but we just didn't get it not until much later i think 2015 which is also when they started adding n64 games from the wii that also, that brings me to an interesting point, actually. Um, if you did the Wii to Wii U data transfer, uh, you could basically rebuy some of your old Wii game, virtual console games on Wii U at a discounted price. Like, I remember, uh, I mean, I didn't, I did the system transfer, but I didn't have any, uh, because I have two Wiis. The first one, the, the laser died, so I used my other Wii uh, primarily, but uh, my first Wii, with the dead laser, I transferred the data over to Wii U because I had some save game data that couldn't be transferred via SD card. So I could continue playing like Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii U. And I remember uh, I had I had I installed some other games on the Wii U, like even without the data transfer. Like I remember I got Paper Mario up Club Nintendo. I put that on the the Wii Wii mode on my Wii U, I believe. I also got stuff like Doc Lewis's Punch Out for on WiiWare uh, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's a side tangent. I know. I know. Club Nintendo also had some exclusive games like Ralph of Ultra Hand. I got that as well. So it was, I think it's a neat novelty. So after I put Paper Mario on the Wii mode on Wii U, I went over to the Wii U eShop and Paper Mario was only two bucks. So I got that as well. I eventually bought every N64 game off the Wii U Virtual Console. Because, uh, one, there were a few games I wanted that weren't on the Wii Virtual Console, like Harvest Moon 64. Uh, secondly, I feel that N64 emulation, even now, still has ways to go. I think it's definitely improved, but I, I think it's still kind of patchy at times. So, uh, I, I was figured I'm pretty satisfied with the emulation on the Wii U Virtual Console, so I decided to get all the games they had, which was a bit of an investment, but I still managed to do it. Uh, DS games, I did consider getting as many DS games as I could off the Wii U Virtual Console because I don't have a DS capture card. So that, that's like my only other avenue of recording DS footage onto like a capture card without using a camcorder. My only problem is that I'm not too happy with the screen orientations. Uh, there's one which is just shows like the top and bottom screen that has like a DS frame around it and I think that's too small and I think zooming in during editing just makes it a bit more blown up. There's a uh, one with top screen priority, bottom screen priority, where it shrinks the other screen. And I th on the gamepad, I think it looks okay, but on the TV, I think they shrink the less prioritized screen a bit too much for my liking. Uh, there's one that I'm happier with, where they actually show like the top screen and the bottom screen respectively, like the way you would on a normal DS without the frame, and it actually makes it like the screens larger. Uh, but like it also reorients the screens on the gamepad so it looks sideways and the controls are also like adapted for that so if i press left on the d-pad for instance i'm not going to move left in a 2d platformer i have to press up on the d-pad in order to move left stuff like that the controls are kind of like quote unquote inverted in a sense so i can't play a game normally and i also can't remap the d-pad so that's not a viable option for me there's another one where it, it, I mean, that orientation specifically was mainly for touchscreen specific games. There's another one that's basically the same thing, but instead it also orients the top screen so that both sides, so that both screens are kind of like look sideways. You can also use it for like DS games that uh, position vertically, like Brain Age. So when, if the screens are positioned like that, you can basically use that mode so you can display on the TV properly. 
There's also a feature that displays like the top screen footage only on the top screen, the bottom foot, the touch screen footage on the gamepad, which I think makes sense. But in terms of recording footage, you're only going to see the top screen, so that's not really going to do me too many favors if I want to show touch screen stuff. So, yeah, I would have preferred to like, like I know other DS emulators, for instance, uh, have it so that the they have like the top screen and bottom screen like right beside each other left and right and they're both equal size. That's what I would have preferred because I think that makes the image... Uh, there's like less to sacrifice if I ever need to resize anything in editing. So that's what I would have preferred. Or like have the, have the top screen and bottom screen like kind of like what I described earlier where it's like it's larger, doesn't have like the frame around it and like takes up all the screen and still looks, you know, air positioned like the way it would on a DS. But the controls itself aren't like reversed or anything. It's still like the normal controls for like the D-pad as it would play on a regular DS. That's what I would have preferred. But it is what it is. I did notice like after the Wii was discontinued that they were still releasing like like any indie developers were still releasing games on the system long after the system was discontinued. I remember seeing like limited run games and stuff do physical releases of games. I don't know if this was actually I don't know if it was limited run specifically, but like I know there were companies doing final prints of games like uh, Chronicles of Teddy, I believe. Uh, Axiom Verge we got a late Wii U physical release. Uh, there was the Shmup Collection. There was Shakedown Hawaii. They, they, they all got released on the eShop, of course, but physically. Uh, they got they were like some of the last, and they had limited prints, of course. Now that uh, Nintendo is dropping support for both 3DS and Wii U, that made me think about what games I wanted to get on these services. Uh, there were some handfuls of expensive games, for instance, that I found easier to get digitally. Uh, that includes games like Game & Wario, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD, Devil's Third, Fatal Frame Made in the Black Water, which we didn't get physically over here, but even Japanese and European copies especially can be really expensive. So that's why I'm, I've decided to get it digitally. Uh, there are also games delisted before the shutdowns that I didn't buy, like Pure Solar, The Cave as I mentioned earlier, uh, various Mario and Sonic games like London 2012 and Rio 2016 on 3DS were delisted. Sochi 2014 and Rio 2016 on Wii U were delisted. And like the list goes on, I can't list everything. <laughs> that would be here for days. Another point I want to point out is that for for like Wii Shop Channel, 3DS and Wii U eShops, a number of games on those services have either been re-released or are also available on other platforms. Like I've considered getting the Mega Man Battle Network games on Wii U, but they're doing a Battle Network collection like later this, like I think next month actually as we're recording this, so I could just probably get that if I wanted. And also a lot of the virtual console stuff, uh, I mean I can get it through other means, <laughs> I'm being honest. I mainly prioritize like, stuff I really want, like super expensive titles, like I got Rhythm Heaven Fever, because like physical copies, North American copies at least, are really expensive, or eShop exclusives that interest me the most. The rest I can get through other means, because I have... Uh, Tinker 3DS, a new 2DS XL, and then Tinker Wii U. So, if, if need be, I can get stuff after. I guess a big significant moment for me was uh, as a Sonic collector, I've decided to get a bunch of uh, Sonic games off the service before they shut down as well. I remember back in 2018, the only 3DS Sonic game I had was Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal. And I decided to get the rest of them because I, I wanted them. So I got Generations, I got Lost World, I got Fire and Ice because I didn't have those. And I, I really I enjoyed all of them. Lost World 3DS is my favorite. Uh, it's also my third favorite Sonic game of all time. Uh, Fire and Ice I greatly enjoyed over Shadow Crystal. I wasn't a big fan of Shadow Crystal, honestly. Uh, Generations I enjoyed, though it is my least favorite Dims game. And uh, in terms of Wii U, I got... Uh, Rise of Lyric, Lost World, and All Stars Racing Transformed as well, just so I have them, because like I already missed out on the Mario and Sonic games on both platforms, so I figured I might as well get what, what else, what's remaining. Uh, I know Rodea the Sky Soldier on Wii U and 3DS was also delisted in 2020, and uh, I have the Wii U version physically, and also, and which also came with the Wii versions, because I have North American and Japanese copies. I don't have a physical 3DS version yet. I'll probably get that at some point. I would say my... I also the 3DS eShop is also how I got my which would become my second favorite game of all time, Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. I remember seeing like uh, like I was browsing the Sega blogs, which shut down in 2018 actually, and I was browsing through like kind of like through archive.org, and I remember seeing Rhythm Thief and thinking like reading about it and thinking, oh, I want to try that. 
And so I downloaded a demo from the game, uh, got accustomed, tried to get accustomed to the game's controls, found myself really enjoying it, decided, okay, I'll get it. So it was like later that year, I was at university, and I remember like going to the nearest London Drugs to get a gift card, because I still had some eShop credits, so I got another one. And I remember just downloading the game off the university's internet. Or no, no, it wasn't the university's internet. I couldn't connect my 3DS directly to the university's internet, so I used my phone's hotspot, and it took up like, an, like a gigabyte of space. Looking back, I probably could have just <laughs> connected my my hotspot to like the university's Wi-Fi and just downloaded it that way as a pass-through, so I didn't have to use up my phone data. But it still worked. So I pretty much played Rhythm Thief for like the rest of the year, and I got really hooked into it. So that, that's definitely another favorite game of mine. And uh, it's also another game where that physical editions are really expensive. I got my physical edition, my North American copy, for 80 bucks at Video Game Trader. And uh, yeah, that was quite the investment. It was a very impulse purchase, but I decided it, it was like a now or never kind of purchase. If I don't buy it now, I probably miss my chance at some point. I don't know if I'll ever find a copy again. I also did get two Japanese copies. And, uh, and at that point, the J I did get a Japanese 3DS, but the eShop was already delisted. Or, yeah, the Rhythm Thief on the Japanese eShop was already delisted, so I couldn't get it. I did get the regular Sonic games, though, like Lost World and stuff like that. I mainly... Actually, on my other 3DS systems that I have more than one, I mainly prioritize buying Lost World 3DS and Rhythm Thief, because those are some, like, two favorite games on 3DS, so I mainly tried to get those. I also got a PAL 3DS, just so I could, uh... Because I, I also edit on Rhythm Thief Wiki. So I've been uh, adding, I've been adding like English, Japanese, French, Spanish, uh, German, Italian stuff, and like the North American version doesn't support German or Italian, so I'd have to get the PAL stuff. I have, of course, I have other means of doing that, but I decided to get one officially because why not? I, I haven't gotten a PAL physical copy of Rhythm Thief yet, but I do own two physical Japanese copies. One which is like the sake of the best budget label one, which is the main one I got. The only other one I got was mainly because I was trying to get the Special Selection CD, but it didn't come with it, so I just got a regular copy of Rhythm Thief. I wish I had more to say, honestly, but considering I'm pretty much in like a time crunch mode and stuff like that, I just... I don't know. Maybe I'll do a remastered version or a director's cut in the future, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've never really done too many of these like video essays, I guess. Like I, I get the general idea, but... I've never really had too much practice with it, so this is kind of like a learning experience for me, so definitely think about doing more of these in the future. I was on the fence, like I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, I was on the fence about whether I wanted to do this on my vlog channel or my main channel, but I guess considering the topic in general, I mean, I, can, I don't mind doing this on my vlog channel, but I decided to put it on my main channel. So that was it. Uh, that was, those were my personal experiences with the Nintendo storefronts. Not sure what's going to happen in the future in terms of Switch or anything, but uh, yeah. Just wanted to share my memories and stuff. And if you enjoyed, hope you did. Not too much for me to say. <laughs> Again, off the cuff. So this has been Chrome logging off. Have a good one. Bye. Oh.